There is a debate as to how God speaks to New Testament believers today. Now, on one side, God speaks in so many ways that one begins to wonder as some Christians are living in the twilight zone. Yet others believe that the Bible is the complete revelation to mankind. And since the canon is now closed, well, God only will speak to us through the Bible. Now, first of all, God's been around for quite a long time. In the book of Genesis, we find the words, And God said, Let there be light. The question is, did God speak before this? I want you to think about that, because I believe he did, because if God spoke before this, then that means that the Bible does not contain everything that he spoke. To those that would say, well, prove it. Well, the angels were there when the earth was created, according to Job chapter 38, verses 4 through 7. To state that God never said anything to them would be highly unlikely. Also, the plan for Jesus to be the lamb that would be slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, would indicate that it was at least some type of discussion of what would be needed before mankind was even created. Before the words, let there be light, I believe God talked. And I don't believe one could say that those were the very first words that he spoke. And since he did speak, those words are also the word of God. So consider this concept. Consider Adam in the garden. He was given the warning concerning the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We see in the scriptures that God had warned him concerning special instructions concerning the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But also remember that God put him in the garden to dress and to keep it. And I believe there were instructions concerning how to take care of the garden, but they are not written in the Bible. Because I really don't believe God just threw Adam there and Adam was like, hmm, uh, huh, geez, I wonder what I do now. No, that doesn't seem to be consistent. Here's another thing. Cain and Abel, when they offered up a sacrifice to the Lord, either God had spoke to them how it was to be done, or God had spoke to Adam and Eve in order for them to teach their children how it was to be done. Just because God spoke something that is not recorded in the Bible does not mean it's the word of God. And neither does that mean that every spoken word that God speaks is always added to the canon. Now, throughout the Old Testament, God would speak in either dreams, visions, face to face, and especially through his word. Yet some would say, well, the, the Bible is complete now. So that's the only way God speaks. And I have a strong disagreement with that. Consider Jesus. He was the living word of God in the flesh. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, remember in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, it states the following. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And when I believe that every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God contains the Bible, but that's not every word that God speaks or is speaking to us today. Have you ever considered that Jesus taught that when he did teach, it would be the word of God? But not everything in this was written down in the Bible, but it was still the word of God. Matthew 10, 27, he says, What I tell you in darkness, that speak in the light, and what ye hear in the ear that preach among the housetops. Mark 4.34, Without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were, do- were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Notice, revelation and insight was given in private, and thus it was still the word of God. It just was not written down for our benefit. Mark 14, 49, I was daily with you in the temple teaching. 
Luke 6.6, 6, And it came to pass on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. It doesn't give us complete details of what he taught on, but whatever he would teach on, there would be revelation, it would be the word of God to those that were listening. John 8.2, And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. John chapter 20, verse 30, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in his book. John 21, 25, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, every one. Why? Because it's the word of God. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Even after the resurrection, he gave fresh insight and revelation concerning the resurrection. Luke twenty four twenty seven. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Also in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he spoke of many things concerning the kingdom of God. We just don't know what it was. But in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Unless you can prove that we are no longer living in the last days, then we see that God does not limit himself as wretched radio would. And he determines how he communicates to his people and not wretched radio. During the Great Tribulation, Revelation chapter 10 verses 1 through 4, after all this revelation that's given out to the Apostle John, then he's told in verse 4, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Here the revelation is clear as day, but the Apostle John is told not to write it down. But it was still the Word of God. And then finally, in Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 6, there are two witnesses for three and a half years prophesy. What do they prophesy? I haven't the slightest clue, and no one else does. But that's at the point. It's still the Word of God. And it's not added to the canon. That's the key. This is the proof right here. But here's the point I want to leave you with. Notice we don't know everything concerning this prophecy. Actually, we don't know much of it concerning the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. But it's not added to the canon. But it is to be judged by the canon as with any prophecy or any, quote, revelation from God. However, people like Wretched Radio need to study their Bible more to see that God does not limit himself as they try to attempt to put God in a box. Because God can and will speak in many ways. And yes, the key is that it must line up to the written word of God. But the other key is but not to take the Bible and idolize it above God himself. God himself who gave us the Bible who is the most important things in our life. And we need to give an account to him and allow him to speak to us.